Okay class, this is the last video on the introduction to the muscle system. It's going to be short, I hope. Just wanted to go over these terms with you. Roles in which a muscle may act. Now, if the muscle is the agonist, this will be the prime mover, which is the main muscle responsible responsible for producing a specific movement, a specific action. I'm, I don't even know how many prime movers I'm going to make you know. Maybe two. I'm not going to have you figure out um, the primary mover unless it's really important. Because most of the actions that you are going to learn, say like flexion of the elbow joint, there are three, four muscles that are doing that. All I care is that you understand what muscles are producing that action. But there are some you need to know what the agonist is, and I will let you know. Now, a synergist. These are muscles that help the primary moving, mover. Like I said, most actions are going to take a group of muscles to produce that action. They're all working together to produce that action, assist the prime mover, and create the action. They are helpers. Synergist means working together. If we could all just work together, that would be great. Now, an, an antagonist, this muscle or muscle group, they oppose the action of the primary mover, whatever that action is. So say a primary mover contracts, and as the primary mover contracts, the antagonist has to relax. They have the opposite, the antagonists have the opposite action, has the agonist. So if one muscle produces, say, flexion, the anti flexion at the, the elbow joint, the antagonist will produce extension at that same elbow joint. And the other thing you need to know about agonists and antagonists, they are located on opposite sides of the body. This will become clear once we start getting into our muscles. But here we have the biceps brachii. This is in the anterior upper arm. When this muscle contracts, it's going to flex the elbow. The triceps brachii is located on the back side of the upper arm, directly opposite of this muscle. When this muscle contracts, the antagonist muscle on the opposite side must relax. It has to relax to allow that movement. Vice versa, once the triceps contracts, this muscle has to relax. They are both crossing this joint. They both have action at this joint, but their actions are opposites. So these guys are antagonists to each other. Another great example that you probably can even fit, you can figure out, we have extensors. We have our quad muscles in our anterior thigh. There are four quad muscles. That's why they're called quad. And you'll learn their names. They are all working together to produce knee extension. The four quad muscles are all synergists. They are working together for knee extension. Now directly behind the quads, these are in the anterior thigh, in the posterior thigh back here, we're going to have their antagonists. And those are the hamstring muscles. We have three hamstring muscles back here that you will learn. These three hamstring muscles are all synergists to each other. They are all working together to produce flexion of the knee at, at that knee joint. But these guys, these flexors, 
they're antagonists to the quads. The quads are antagonists to the flexors. They are on opposite sides of the body. They have opposite action at the joint where they both cross. So that will become real apparent once we start working on our muscles. Just wanted to give you those now because we're going to be putting um, our muscles into these large groups. Now, before you start looking at all your muscle names and freaking out, this is a little guide to help you learning muscle names and actions. Look for any clues the muscle may be giving you. The muscle names, usually there's some clues hidden in them. Number one, they can be named by the location of their muscle attachments. Origin first and then insertion. One of the first muscles you're going to be learning is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Now this muscle, it has its origins on the sternum, that's the sterno part, the clavicle, that's the clado, clido part, and the insertion will be the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So sternocleidoid mastoid. Then does the muscle have an action word? Usually if it's an if it has its action word, it will be the first word of the muscle name. Oops. Like this muscle. Flexor carpi ulnaris. What is it doing? It's flexing. What's it? This one's really good. What's it flexing? The carpi. What is the carpi? The wrist. What side is of the, the forearm is it on? The ulnar side. This is a great name. This tells you so much. It tells you where it is. It's, t it's telling you its action. I am flexing the wrist and I am and I'm on the ulnar side. Adductor longus. This is going to be one of your um, adductor muscles in your inner thigh. It's telling you its action. I'm the adductor. I'm an adductor. And I'm really long too. Look, sometimes you're going to have the location of the, mu of the muscle um, on the bone or body where it is found. So what does that mean? So if we have something called the obicularis oris, oris stands for oral. This is going to be by your mouth, obicularis oris. The temporalis muscle, this is going to be over the temporal bone. The intercostal muscles, intercostal, that means in between the ribs. These are in between the rib muscles. Then we have the biceps brachii. What is brachium? Remember the brachial region? That is the arm. So these are going to be in the arm, the upper arm. Biceps femoris. This tells you it has to do with the femur. It's a muscle that's going to be located over the femur. Then there's going to be the relative size of the muscle. Usually these muscles are going to be grouped together. Like the one you all know, the gluteus maximus. If, if, if it's called maximus, you can pretty well be sure it is the largest muscle of the group. Then we have gluteus medius. It's the middle-sized muscle and the gluteus minimus. That is the smallest of the group. Adductor longus. This one's telling us it's the longest one of that group. And then you're going to have an adductor brevis. Brevis just means small. It's going to be the smallest one.
the direction of muscle fibers. If a muscle starts with a term like rectus, rectus means the muscle fibers are going in a straight up and down pattern. That would be like the rectus abdominis. If you look at the rectus abdominis, you will see the muscle fibers going straight up and down. If the muscle name says oblique, it is telling you the muscle fibers are in an oblique direction. We have an external oblique abdominal muscle and an internal oblique abdominal muscle. And you look at their muscle fibers, they are in an oblique pattern. Transverse, that tell, that's telling you the muscle fibers are in a transverse direction. Another abdominal muscle, the transversus abdominis. Those muscle fibers are in this orientation, in the transverse plane. There's this word, orbicularis. You have two muscles that you're going to be learning right away. Orbicularis. If you see that, look and try to see orbit. I am an orbit that's going around in a circle. So orbicularis means like a, a ring or an orbit around a planet. So if you see a word like this, orbicularis oculi, this is a ring-like um, pattern of those muscle fibers. And in this one, it's going around oculi. That stands for ocular, which is eye. So orbicularis oculi, a ring-like orientation around the eye. You already saw orbicularis oris, same thing, a ring-like orientation around the mouth. Some muscle names will begin with a prefix indicating the, the number of origins that that muscle has. The biceps, if it says starts with biceps, it's going to have two origins. You're going to have the biceps brachii and the biceps femoris. Both of those muscles have two origins. Then we have the triceps, and uh, I think that's the only triceps in the body. The triceps of the upper arm, it has three origins. Now, when you get a pure, I call these pure gold muscle names, they tell you exactly where they are, what they do. Um, I love these names. Levator scapulae. Its action is to elevate the scapula. Great name. Extensor carpi radialis longus. I'm an extensor. I'm extending what? Carpi means wrist. I'm extending the wrist. I'm on the radial side. And I'm the longest one great name. And you've already seen this name before, flexor carpi ulnaris, another great name. I'm a flexor, I'm flexing the wrist, and I'm on the ulnar side. These names make sense. On your exam, I will giving, be giving you a name, um, I will be giving you a muscle that you're going to draw I'll give you the or origin and insertion, and you're going to draw it on a blank skeleton. And I will give you some clues about that muscle, whether it's a long one, a short one, big, small, the direction of muscle fibers, a bunch of the stuff. You will be able to draw the muscle based on the origin and insertion and how to draw muscles, because we're going to be doing that this week. And you're going to figure out the action based on how we figure out actions. I, the insertion, is pulled towards the origin. So once you figure out the action, you can use that action word as your first name of your muscle, whatever that action may be. If it's an extensor, you can say extensor. And then based on other criteria that I give you, you can make a name, a three-word name, 
that makes sense. It won't be too bad, but it will just um, signify that you understand how muscles work and give me a good name that goes with it. So that's it for this little video. And now it's on to our muscle master list, worksheet number one.